Good morning, everyone. I hope you guys are all having a blessed week. Man, I'll tell you what, we're in an inferno here in Northern California. We've been up over 100 for several days. Today's supposed to be like 108, tomorrow 109, Sunday 110, and Monday Labor Day, another 110 degree day. So we're, we're sweltering here. So listen, I want to talk to you today about making daily adjustments, and it's something that we all need to do. And our scripture comes from Luke 9, 23. And it says, And he said unto them all, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross daily, and follow me. That's what I want to talk about, that take up his cross daily. Because what that means is make adjustments. You know, I've always been a boxing fan. I love boxing. Uh, I have many relatives that love boxing. We're just boxing fanatics. Uh, I was a boxer very, at a very young age in school, and I, I love the sport. But I grew up back when Muhammad Ali in the early 60s when he came on the scene, and then I lived through the best middleweight division ever. Back when we had the Sugar Ray Leonard, Roberto Duran, Tommy Hearns, I mean, it was just phenomenal. And then after that, came the Mike Tyson era. And only about a Mike Tyson fight, you better be there when the fight starts because it's only going to last a couple seconds. So anyway, listen, I love boxing because boxing is just like life. You can literally be in a 12-round championship fight and you can lose 11 rounds straight, literally get beat half to death, and come into that 12th round and throw one lucky hook and knock that guy out and you win the fight because the fight is never over till that last bell rings. Just like life, life is never over until you take your last breath. So there's four main players in a boxing match. Every boxer, when he steps into the ring, he has a minimum of three other people that can stop his fight. And that is, first of all, is his cut man. His cut man comes into that ring, and his job, if his fighter gets cut, his job is to stop all of those cuts from bleeding. If he doesn't, there's a chance that the doctor, the ringside doctor, if he looks at that guy and says, hey, this cut's too bad, he can't continue, the doctor can stop the fight. So the cut man's job is to make sure he gets that bleeding stopped so the doctor won't stop the fight. And the next one is... The corner man. The corner man is probably the most important man other than the fighter. Now the corner man, he has the ability also to stop the fight. If he sees that his fighter is just getting completely beat up and he doesn't want him to take any more damage, he can throw in talent and stop the fight. And the other person, of course, who can stop the fight is the referee. If the referee thinks that that guy is getting beat up too bad, the referee can stop the fight. So there's four people that can stop a fight. The fighter himself, if he's just, he hurts, breaks the wrist, hitting the guy or something, he can say, hey, my, my wrist hurt, I can't go on. He can stop the fight. The corner man can stop the fight. The ringside doctor can stop the fight. And the referee can stop the fight. So the cut man's in charge of the cuts, and the reason he's there is so the trainer doesn't have to worry about him. The trainer has two jobs. His job is to look at his fighter when he's in the ring in combat, and to look at the other fighter's defenses. And he needs to advise his fighter on what he can do to exploit the other fighter's defenses. And also, he looks at if his own fighter is getting hit, he looks at his defenses to try to figure out what he can tell him to do to keep from getting hit. So that's his whole function. You know, there's a lot of fighters that have been in a ring and said, you know what, I can beat that guy, but I can't beat his corner man. If you got corner men like Angelo Dundee and a few like that, you know, you're actually in there fighting two people. So you remember Jesus' words, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. People, the Lord Jesus Christ and the way he speaks to you through your Bible, he is your corner man. The Lord Jesus is your corner man. And he tells you, take my yoke upon you and learn of me. 
You know, I get out my Bible every morning, every morning. I mean, my ever since I became a Christian, it's the first thing I do in the morning is I read my Bible. And people, I'm not kidding. I, I don't read 15 minutes, if that, sometimes five minutes, sometimes two, that the Lord will knock on my head and he'll say, hey, listen, remember what happened the other day? This might happen. Words jump right off. Or else I'll read something else and he'll say, hey, you need to work on that. That right there is why the demonic forces are beating you up. You need to work on that. So the Lord tells me that every day. Every day I read my Bible, the Lord shows me something that I need to work on. What he's doing, just like that corner man, he's giving me advice. He's telling me what I need to do to make my life better so that the demonic host doesn't attack me. I'm to make the adjustments that the Lord Jesus points out to me in the scripture. And people trust me, I have to make adjustments every single day, every day. This is what it says in Matthew 11, 28, 30. Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. People, one thing that I've learned about studying the Bible is a lot of times I will get into fights that I don't need to be fighting. I get into fights with the demonic forces that I need to turn over to the Lord Jesus and let Him handle it. Most of the time, I have no business even being in the ring. Turn it over to the Lord and let Him fight those battles for me. People, no boxer would ever get into the ring without a corner man and a cut man. He just wouldn't do it. Just like no Christian should start off his day with anything other than his nose stuck in his Bible. People, I have discovered, I realize some of you have jobs where you have to be there at 3 in the morning or something where that just doesn't work. But I found for me that the best time for my Bible study is in the morning when I first get up. Because number one, the Lord will point something out to me almost every time. Hey, you need to work on this. And it's fresh in my mind and I can spend all day just waiting for something to happen where I can apply that to. So listen, a couple things I want you to remember. Number one, just like a boxing match, it's not done till that finer, final bell rings. You can lose every day. You can just be wiped out. Doesn't matter. It's not over until you take your last breath. Number two, don't fight fights you don't need to fight. Turn them over to the Lord Jesus Christ. Let Him fight it. Don't even get in the ring. We get in the ring so many times when we don't need to. And the last one is, pick a good time. A good time during the day when you can get into that Bible and allow the Lord Jesus, our corner man, to advise you on what you're doing wrong and what you need to change. People, I change daily. Daily. The Lord's always pointing out to me, hey, you need to work on that. And people, I got things, I got a list of things that I need to work on. So anyway, I just want to give you something to think about and a boxing lesson. Every hell you choose, just remember, once you take your last breath, it's a done deal.